<laughs> and very nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Hi, ladies. Oh, beautiful piano. Everything looks great. Thank you. So you are in Salzburg? Yes, I live in Salzburg. Oh, lucky you. What a beautiful city. <laughs> yeah. I, I really love it. So you're going to play the list for me? Yes. Fantastic, fantastic. I printed out a copy. So uh, at, at your convenience, would you like to play the whole thing first and then we'll talk about it? Yeah, if possible. Sounds great.
<laughs> what fantastic, absolutely fantastic fingers you have, right? You should be so proud of, of your accomplishments in playing this. So I, I have some thoughts that might make it even more exciting. So first, I want to ask you what you think about this piece. So like, what would you say is the, um, the character that Liszt is trying to, to portray or a picture that he's painting? So I'm asking sort of a simple question. How serious is this piece? Um, we know it's seriously difficult, but what about his character? Is it serious? Or is it more like a joke for fun? I feel like it's not that serious. Exactly, right? It, it's all like you're supposed to be smiling the entire time. And your listeners should be smiling or laughing um, the entire time also. So I'm missing a little bit of that character. So um, let's, uh, let's go through in the beginning and let me ask uh, questions about some of the places. Do you have the score? It may be easier to do with the book. Okay, good, 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 good. So in the beginning, like in most of the Rhapsodies, I have a feeling that uh, it, it's like we're seeing a poet who is about to tell a story, right? And he's just kind of getting started, trying out his whatever instrument he's playing, right? So I think in the first, let's say three measures, I would like to have more of a feeling that you are just trying things and seeing which way they'll go. There's something very definite about the way you start. How about just let it, you know, people are still talking in a bar and the poet is just playing a little bit of this. this. So don't. So he's trying the first harmony. First harmony is good. Second harmony, a little, a little bit more, right? Because something's happening. And nah, I was too serious, right? So each one has its own little character. Let's see if you can start by telling us a story already in the first three measures. Right? So just make sure that each of the harmonies has a different feeling to it. Okay, let's try. point your attention to some things. Then it's a subito pianissimo. Tempo. Oh no. Right? So that's not the loudest, that's the softest. Pianissimo, right? We had this crescendo, but it leads to nothing. Da -da. Da -da. Right? And another thing is, here's your rubato on each one. You go. Okay, second one, exactly the same. Third one, exactly the same. That's not fun. So on the first one, second one, right? So, or, or some different way for each one. Because if the rubato is exactly the same three times, boring, not fun. Okay, so let's see if we can try that. So change your rubato and then very subito pianissimo, like Liz says. Okay, let's try. more interesting and fun. So now in measure number four, the smorzando, 
do you see Sforzando? You start in a beautiful pianissimo. That was just perfect. But what does Sforzando mean, do you know? Uh, dying away. Yeah, well, because you already started pianissimo, how are you gonna die from there? The only thing you can do from there is to slow down, right? You have no, you don't have any other options because you're already very quiet. So basically, just let it completely disappear, take a breath, and then start to develop. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so last time, and then we will stop with the first page and keep going. not to complain, but I have to, just a little bit in this new section. So again, we have, and again, they were the same. So I, you should think about how they are different. Are they getting louder? Are they getting faster? Are they getting slower? You have many ways of making them different because List the composer doesn't tell us anything, which means we have freedom. But him not saying anything doesn't mean that we should do anything. Because again, boring. Right? We, boring is the biggest sin we can possibly have here. But I, I'm not going to ask you to come up with anything now because that's something that could be fun to think about. Right? Um, so let's go on to the next session. Yum, ba-dum, yum, ba-dum. So my, I have two questions about this part. Question number one. When you do yum, ba-dum, which is the loudest note? Is it yum param or is it yum param? Because right now I'm hearing loud, so loud, yum bam, exactly the same. So I become confused. It could be, it could be either way. It could be yum param or dum dum. It's up to you, the artist. I just I don't like flat and uninterested. So Pick something for now, either tam param or yam param, and try it. And then we'll try both ways and see which one you like more. <laughs> Different problems with that one. I meant the first one. That one. You chose that the first one is louder, right? It's probably the correct choice, but to make it work better, the last note should be lifted. Yum, dum, dum, dum. Otherwise, it goes down, right? And it gets stuck. I mean, he says there is a staccato and a legato slur which usually enlist and most composers means lift. Almost feel like it's a string and you're plucking it. A plop. Try that, see if you like it. That was beautiful. 
That was great. And look at what happens then. Dum, ba -dum, dum, ba -dum, pom. You're then able to, to go down because you're already up. List is very smart. Everything, well, because we know he composes at the piano. So his hands are doing a lot of the composing, a lot of the thinking. So if we just imagine what Liszt would have done with his hands, usually that solves our problems with phrasing and articulation, it gives us all the knowledge we need about the piece. It's amazing. Just pretend you're Liszt. Long hair, very handsome, you know. So let's try that part again. Down and up, down and up, down, right? Complaint because here, look at the way it's written. You have to hold these guys the entire time. You're doing, it, but it's really. Do you hear it? He wrote that. Do you, do you see that these notes are eighth notes? So you cannot go. That's illegal. No. I, I think you need to hold them down. If it's too hard to hold them down in the right hand, do them in the left hand. Yeah, that works too. Uh -huh, very good. Do you see, we're getting much, much more deep sound, harmonic sound. And then we have that beautiful major, A major. It's the first time we heard that. That is so special. You should be smiling so hard that your face hurts because it's that kind of a note. So probably later, just wait for it, yum, ba -da, da 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 surprise, right? So make it much more special. Hold on one second. I'm, I'm not quite done complaining about this measure. There's a lot of issues. You're just, I think when you read it, you didn't really look carefully at it. Um, so you hold this, but then there is a staccato. I think we have to hear a little bit of silence because this time you held your pedal through the into the next note. But at least in my edition, uh, it specifically says to lift, yeah, da, da, yeah, da, da. we should hear that silence, okay? <coughs> A little bit longer before the A major chord. Because it's such a special moment. And if you think about it, it's the end of that introduction. Because then something completely new starts. So I think you should feel free to slow down as much as you want. This is a rhapsody. Should sound more rhapsodic. Do you know what that word means? It's free. Free, like you're making it up at the moment when you're playing, right? So let's see, then slower, slower, smile. Do you see the fermata? Uh, the rest. Oh, my fermata is on. Um... 
over there. And then there's a fermata on the rest also, before the rest. Fermata. Do you see? Your music doesn't have one? Oh, I think we need it. I, I printed out uh, some Emil Sauer edition here. I will show you if I can, if I can get that in. Do you see it? Uh -huh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I think it's... It's not there. Oh, how interesting, how interesting. I think it is needed, right? Because it keeps saying, slow down, slow down, slow down. Because that note is so special. I think it would make sense to just stop there and let your audience appreciate that you did something wonderful, like you went from minor to major. I think that moment is so special. You cannot just walk by it. You have to stop, look, appreciate. So, you know, you can go online and look at some different editions and see what you think. Because there's so many. I thought this, the one I printed out just randomly was Emil Sauer, um, the editor, because he's so close to Liszt's time. I think he may, may have been Liszt's student, if I remember correctly. So I figure, okay, good. Okay, so um, now let, let's skip a little bit, uh, a little bit further um, to this stuff. Uh, so this is, uh, in my edition, it's the next page. Can we look at that part? It's on the next. So um, it says leggerissimo. Mm -hmm. Yes, what does that mean? This smooth. It... No, 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 no. It means just the opposite, actually. Leggero means light, very lightly, barely touched. And leggerissimo means just float over the keys, barely touch them, because I'm getting from you. But I would like to hear, while it is not, just think that you're only bringing the key down, not all the way, but only like halfway. So the sound is so light and so airy, completely different. So let's see, just, uh, so I would suggest having fingers that are actually quite round, so that the attack is fast, fast and light. Like you're, like you're just scratching the keys a little bit. Try to see just how quiet and light those can be. There you go, there you go. Because I wonder why so much pedal. I would clear the pedal in between them, certainly. But really, you don't even need pedal. That, that's why they sound so heavy, is because you're pedaling them. Because look, the next section, I think it's, I have list marking for the next section is pedal. So these two little things, I think should be very different, very light. Otherwise, everything sounds the same. Try it once without pedal and see if you like. And then with, well, that has to be with pedal. So no pedal, no pedal. And you can stop a little bit again. I think you've practiced this with the metronome a lot, right? Because everything sounds very, very strict. To me, it's missing some of that freedom, freedom to breathe. So try the third. I am, and then foot goes down, and we have more sound. Uh huh. So, what did you think? I thought that was a lot more interesting. I think it gives a difference in 
because uh, yeah. Your edition says to, to pedal there? Does your book say to pedal? Yeah, it says to pedal for the whole thing. Here. It can still be done if you're very, very quiet. I just like the difference. Look, you look on internet for different editions. You might get interesting ideas. Um, because for my, for my personal taste, your technique is so perfect and so clean, but to my taste, everything sounded the same. I would like a lot more you know, variety of sound. And that means sometimes pedal, sometimes less pedal, sometimes very light, sometimes very legato, sometimes leggero, so very lightly, right? So we have big differences. But anyways, let's keep going. That's something for you to think about. The whole idea of a masterclass is that you get different ideas, right? Something new to think about. It's so fun to make a piece completely your own. And that comes from absorbing different things, listening to different recordings, maybe, right? Okay, so the next section I'd like to look at is the Vivace Asai. Uh, okay, so here's my question for you. In this section, if you had, let's say, if this were a movie or a story, how many different people are involved in this story? At least two. At least two, right? My problem is that I'm hearing everything as a continuation. I'm hearing dum da 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 But isn't it one person go da 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 and the second person go da 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 Right, I always see like a cartoon, like like two completely different people. So somehow I think you have to create completely different sound like this business. Um. What is, are these notes? Is, is kind of a deeper sound that somebody's singing. And then I see, a, like in a cartoon, maybe like a cartoon animal going <laughs> uh, on, this, on this business. Um, very chair, very light, and just going <laughs> towards the top where it gets very loud, right? So let's see if we can do just these first like three measures and create as much difference as possible. <laughs> I want you to be two different people, okay? Okay. Ooh, fantastic. That was so exciting to listen to, right? So cool. Okay, so now what we have to do is, uh, now that we've got our two people, now we have to figure out what they are doing. So let, let's see if you can do this. Um, let's only play the stuff that is person number one. Da -da 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 -dum. Da -da 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 -dum. Only those people from one to another. And let's figure out what happens to that melody. So we're skipping. Da -da 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 -da. Aha! So did you notice what happened? Uh, Each time it got higher and more exciting. So maybe the first time you can do it both a little bit slower and a little bit softer and then develop it. So it's going somewhere. So can we try the three of them in a row one more time? Just person number one, but this time have something happen in the story. That was great. That was just great, right? Because it, it's logical. It makes sense. Okay, good, good, good. So now let's have everything, both people. But really the second person is still going to do that business, you know, like a, like a little cartoon animal flying off or exploding, or I don't know what they're doing. But the first person is the melody. 
and that that has some kind of a, a plan. Okay, so let's try playing everything and see if you can keep my attention on person number one. Okay, good. So now let's discuss person number two. Because person number number one was great. So person number two said three different things in the part that we played. In the first thing, didn't say anything important. In the second thing, higher, but still not important. But on the third thing, he says, well, enough of you, me, 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 right? So suddenly, um, when he goes into this, um, you know, the, you have to make it sound much more melodic. Explain to us that that's that person saying, no, it's my turn now, you be quiet. Right? Right, right, right. So then the whole process repeats again. And this time, person number two again wins the argument. Right? I mean, really wins it. Goes on and on and on. Right? So let's do let's do the second time. Make it even more fun for me. for me how the section ended. So you have to become so pianissimo before the triplets, before, and probably slow down as well. It ha the section has to end, right? You can't just go, okay, one, two, no. You have to let the first person, well, this is the second person, right? You have to let him really thin. Once again, remember this is a rhapsody, which means a lot more freedom, a lot more fun. So you start from, I don't know where's a good place to start from. <laughs> you still kept a lot of energy. But I think the whole idea is that as you get lower, you have to get tired and far away. So you need to get both softer and probably a little slower. But because you can only get so soft, right? And if you keep getting even, losing even more energy, becoming more tired, there is no other way but to slow down. Besides which, Liszt kind of tells you he wants to slow because you had, eight notes in every measure, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and now you only have six. Right, so let it end, make it fun. Because if you just go, then there is no surprise for the listener what happens next. But we've been going down, like rain coming down. Then we're at the bottom, what's going to happen now? So he's going up, what's going to happen? Oh no, we're going to jump again. We're going to run again, right? So keep, keep giving us these surprises. Okay, one more time. Nice, nice, nice. That was already much more interesting. I think when you have a little time to live with it, I think you'll feel free to slow down even more. I threw, through the whole thing, my feeling was your, your fingers are so good that you don't slow down ever. But I think the fast parts will sound even more exciting 
if they're surrounded by slow parts or slower parts. Right? Okay, so now we have a brilliant section, the next one. And we have three measures in a row that go right? And then the situation changes. So here's my question. These three measures, are they getting louder or are they getting softer? I... Uh, softer, in my opinion. I, the reason I'm asking is because I could not tell. I can accept either decision, although I think logically it's actually easier to make them get louder rather than softer, but either can work because they're getting lower. I think that's why you're, you're choosing softer, right? Yeah, and, then, and there's also, and it's like, uh, it's different, so I feel like it's easier to like make a... It could be, could be, I can accept, as I said, list doesn't say anything, which means freedom, which means you, the artist, have to decide. The problem is me as the listener, I have to understand your decision. So if you're getting softer, prove to me that you're getting softer, because I couldn't tell. Okay, so let's do it one more time so that I understand what your intention is, okay? Here's my opinion. So, um, I heard you getting softer. That was great. The problem is then exactly like three measures or two measures later, you do the exact same thing again. You get softer again. How is that fun? So maybe if the first time you get louder and the second time you get softer, that not only is it more interesting, but also that way we have um, like 16 measures together as one unit. That's worth thinking about. Do you want to try it just one time? So then the first one, two, three, four, five measures are basically all getting louder, more or less. And then the next five measures or four measures are all getting soft. I mean, within the la overall louder and overall softer, there are, of course, dynamic waves. You know what I, what I think about is when we're walking up a mountain, you're in Salzburg, you're next to big mountains. When we walk up a mountain, it's not like this. It's like that. And when we walk down from a mountain again, it's like this. So you should be very free with it. But overall, to me, that made more logical sense. But that's something, again, list doesn't say anything. When I told you to hold the long notes, it's because, the, because list said to do that. You must do that. But here, it's my personal opinion. So you can try it or you can ignore it. Make sense? Okay. So uh, let's see, moving, moving on. There's a lot of that going on. So you have a lot of decision making. Okay, so let's get on to everybody's favorite part, that ending. Yeah. I mean, that is just so fun. And of course, you have perfect technique for it. So how big is your hand? Oh, it looks big. You're lucky, right? Okay, so I'm going to complain about basically the same thing I've complained everywhere, is that I'm not exactly sure I understand what your phrasing or your shaping is. So make me understand, okay? Very good. 
Um, and again, it's it's so exciting. Um, but I'm still confused. I think you have to come down at least a little bit. The first time, because the second time it's crescendo, crescendo, crescendo. But if you if you also do crescendo the first time, second time is not fun, right? Don't give away all the surprises right away. So can we try it one more time? First time diminuendo, second time, big explosion. How great was that? Wasn't that fantastic? Just fantastic. Okay, so let's keep going. We're almost at the end. It's so exciting. <laughs> question already so this first time if you compare the first time and the second time there's a big difference right and then the hand jumps back so i think we should do something to make this difference even bigger otherwise it sounds like the same so first of all the right hand is in a lower register what the, do you have any idea of why this does that? What does he want? Any ideas? No. He wants like he wants like the player to show it's another person in a way. I think so. I think so. And there's other differences too. Now the left hand becomes, well, much more difficult. So I'm wondering if we can rebalance a little bit so left hand gets more of our attention than the right. So in the right hand, if you can, instead of voicing the top, if you can voice the bottom. So to make it even lower, right? And meanwhile, left hand is louder. Suddenly we have a completely different world. Right. And then when the right hand jumps back up, it's again like that person saying, no, 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 me, 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 me. Right. There's always this tension. We try. fantastic job i think when you jumped you forgot to voice the pinky because it's something new but you can't expect it to be perfect the first time you try it but let's can we talk about the left hand just a little bit can you do maybe just the first two measures of only the left hand for me so here of course the bass note is interesting but what other note in the left hand is also interesting? I would think that the highest note is also interesting. If you can give it a little bit of an accent in the left hand, it will bring the left hand into focus, right? Because we've been hearing the right hand as queen, but now we need the left hand as king. So can you try the left hand again? So bass note, then soft, and then Yeah, right. So if the right hand's just a little bit quieter, we'll be able to hear that. Do you want to try that maybe slower because we're changing so many things? Yeah. Both hands or? Yes, but slow, slow. So you have a chance to think. The right hand 
goes back up, the left hand stops doing that. So it was only important five times, maybe. Mm. Maybe even only four times. After that, the right hand becomes queen again. So it's hard, but I think it's worth looking at it. You always have to ask yourself, if a composer changes a small detail, why? Why does the composer change it? He must want something. He doesn't tell us, so we have to figure it out. It's because the left hand suddenly became so hard. To me, that means that he wants attention to the left hand. Doesn't seem to be hard for you, but it's hard for the rest of us humans. Right? Not all of us have octaves like yours. So that's absolutely fantastic. Okay, so then the third time we hear the melody, now notice how there are accents in both hands. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's make sure those accents are really special. Okay, so um, I, I think you weren't quite sure what you wanted to do with them. Yeah. So imagine that you were dancing and you went one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, like that. That you did it's like a stump on the way on the word four. So it would probably be a little bit later. And there, of course, the accents disappear, which means if you are able to, you can go as fast as possible. Basically, just take off like crazy. You can always slow down at the end. Or something like that, if you wanted to. You can also go fast and not slow down. Although that could be a little bit more difficult, right? But still what fun. Can we try it? Just if you play wrong notes, who cares? We don't care. Just go. As fast as you can. Right, 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 right. So I have one last suggestion for the last three chords because we're changing registers, right? First we're at the top of the piano, then middle, then bottom. So you can make them sound even more far away from each other because on the first chord, you can really voice the top of the right hand. Then on the second chord, the, kind of the insides of both hands. And then on the last chord, the bottom. Right? It sounds like you jumped two octaves instead of one octave. It's an easy trick. Yeah. And, and, and really adds a lot to this ending. So listen, all my suggestions are only suggestions, only ideas, right? You already have an absolutely fantastic performance. Uh, you, I would be very proud of it if I were you. Thank you. So congratulations on all of your accomplishments. And I look forward to hearing you in many competitions and then in Carnegie Hall.